I'm heading to what the ancient Mayans called the Black Hole. Holbosch Island is a slither of land just off Mexico's southwest coast. In its murky waters swims the biggest fish in the world. This is it. The whale shark. It can grow up to 18 meters. It's got 300 teeth. It dwarfs the great white. And I'm here to go swimming with it. For only two months each year, it comes to feed on the plankton floating around Holbosch, and hordes of tourists follow in its wake. The island we're stepping onto is little more than a sand dune, and to protect it from the influx of visitors, residents have taken an unusual step, banning tarmac and cars. So in Holbosch, the golf cart is king of the road. Aquí están. So these are the keys to my new toy. Locals have also decided against big resorts. The aim is to balance the tourist dollar and the natural environment. After soaking it up, it's time for the main attraction. Let me show you. First, I have some technical questions for my trusted guide, Newbie. One thing that worries me slightly is the whale shark is this huge, mm -hmm. huge mouth. Has anyone yeah. ever been swallowed by accident? <laughs> No, <laughs> not here. <laughs> right. No. I later discovered that Nubi had never actually been in the water with the whale shark. Happily oblivious of that, I set off with our motley crew from Italy, France, Colombia, and in the case of Irma and her family, just down the road in Merida. They feed themselves with plankton, um, sun, uh, this is the plankton. It's the biggest fish in the in the ocean, but it feeds off the smallest little things going here in the sea. Right there! A la una! Obviously they're sort of gentle giants and they don't eat people, but when you see all those fins going around like that... Mm, it's like something out of Jaws. Irma is keen to go in first. My plan is to see if she makes it out again. It was beautiful, but they go too fast. It's hard to catch, to catch on. So it was a great, great first dive. We're just about to go in now with the whale shark and it's just a bit bigger than this boat and it really does look pretty huge. It comes out of nowhere. A huge ghost rising from the depths. Its entourage comes with it. Each whale shark has its unique pattern of white spots. They're solitary animals who only come together to feed. I wonder if it's bothered about the stick insect frantically paddling alongside it. Seems unconcerned. The only danger is from its huge tail. With one graceful swoop, it disappears into the depths. There was a fin right in front of my face and I thought it was going to whack me. And then after that, the whale shark just accelerated. So I think I probably lowered the level of the sea by about that much with all the seawater that I've just consumed. It was incredible. It's a great experience. I mean, oh. it's nothing like I've seen before. It's, they're huge. It seems to be more scared of us than we are of 
Yeah. Oh, Hopefully oh. we don't scare them enough to go away forever. That does seem a real possibility. The government rule that tourists should go in two by two is often ignored. And many whale sharks carry propeller scars from the boats that cluster around them. By midday, they've returned to the depths of the ocean. And we are drifting back to port along a coastline teeming with wildlife. Holbosch is part of a national park and much of the island is reserved for the many species of birds and the mangroves which help hold the island together. Marine biologist Denise Angeles works for the national park and has agreed to show me around. They protect us from the hurricanes because they have these big roots. What would happen to Holbosch if there weren't any mangroves here? Well, uh, as you see in the map, my Holbosch is very near the, the ocean. So all the, so if they came a hurricane or something like that, maybe we can have a lot of problems or losses of houses. Despite the island's dependence on this delicate ecosystem, there are no government rules to prevent large-scale development here. And Mexican investors recently unveiled plans for a major resort. Many locals and visitors are worried that Holbosch's tourism model could be changing. As you know, there are like two kinds of tourism. So the tourists that came here is because they want to be here in wild places with with the nature, so they don't want to have all the services of the big hotels and all that party. Yeah. So I think that the people that came here is because they want to be here. Yeah. The planned resort has been held up by the country's environmental authorities for now. But more tourists are coming to Holbosch each year and with them comes pressure for bigger hotels and more infrastructure. But this fragile island can only support so much. So what do you tell all the whale shark tour operators and everyone that's living off tourism in the island mm -hmm. to try and help them to balance things? First of all, we have to work with the local people because they can understand what is important. So then when they start to uh, understand that, it's more easy when they talk with the tourists. The basic message is everyone wants this to continue for yeah, many yeah, years, that's no? Yeah, that's the main message. Yeah. The whale shark, which draws many of the island's visitors here, remains in many ways a mystery, even to scientists. What don't we know about them? Oh, I think we don't know many things about them. For example, uh, how long they can live, where they can go before here yeah. or after here. Um, like their whole migration. Yeah, plan. yeah, yeah. We don't have like this life cycle, yeah. you know, so we don't have a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> So for such a big animal, yeah. it still, uh, still managed to pass under the scientific radar. Let's go. As I watch the whale shark move slowly away, I hope the tide of touristic development doesn't stop their visits here. It would be a shame to lose these mysterious beings when we've only just begun to get to know them. <laughs>